Hey everybody, welcome back to The Pressing Matters. I'm Scott, thank you for tuning in today and thank you for your support. Today I'll be talking about the new Analog Productions UHQR of Steely Dan's Gaucho. This has been uh, hotly anticipated for months now. It's been delayed a couple times and it's finally here. I've had it in my house for about a week. I've listened to it nightly and I've been comparing it to three other pressings that I've been listening to for months the original RL pressing, the MCA audiophile pressing, and the UME pressing from last year. I'll tell you all about what I found in just a moment. Before I get started, if you're new and haven't already, please consider subscribing. If you like what I do, please hit the thumbs up button and share the video. It's a great way to spread the word about the channel and it's much appreciated. Also, please check out the Pressing Matters storefront that's listed in every description box. It's an Amazon affiliate storefront filled with all the major audiophile record series. And this is a great way to support the channel as well. So thank you so much for your patronage there. The original RL pressing that I have was sent to me by Donald Fagan when it came out. It came in a plain white sleeve. No, just kidding. Um, this is a, a bog standard um, our, uh, sorry, MCA pressing um, that I put in a white sleeve because the original sleeve was looking really tattered and I can't stand looking at tattered sleeves. So I put it in a white sleeve waiting for the day when I found a really clean original jacket. The original pressing has RL inscribed in the dead wax. It has either M1 or M2 also inscribed in the dead wax. You'll also find a master disc stamp in the dead wax. This is how you know you have an original RL pressing. Michael Fremmer recently said that uh, he had both M1 and M2 and he found the M1 better. And I don't doubt him at all. Um, but listening to the M2, I was like, I can't believe anything could sound better than this. The original pressing by Robert Ludwig is the gold standard. Really, it's amazing. It's amazing. And I know people say, oh, I don't have one on quiet vinyl. I got to tell you that this one, I actually stopped the playback of the record and I said, I have to hold this up to the light. I think this is a Quiet pressing, you know, the ones that you can see through. I held it up and it was black and I was like, this is crazy. This is such a quiet pressing and it sounds so good. It's very, very hard to criticize anything on this. And for any um, subsequent try to remaster this, they have a very high bar to fill. Um, it is superb. The only thing that I could find on the original pressing that I thought maybe could use some improvement is in the background vocals, particularly on Babylon Sisters, but also throughout the record. Um, on the original pressing, they're somewhat congested. You don't hear each layer or each voice as clearly as I think they could be heard. That was something I was looking for on future pressings. But overall, if you have the RL, M1 or M2, and it's clean, you have one of the best sounding records ever made. I'll put it that way. Um, it's usually 10 to $30. So really, you can't go wrong picking up one, even if it's just for comparison. It is beautiful. It really, really is. A couple years later, not long after, this um, MCA Audiophile edition came out and people were scratching their heads like, why would they do that? The original sounds perfect. Um, Yet, of course, audiophile companies are going to try, and they tried. And like several of the other companies around that time, um, Mobile Fidelity, Nautilus, to a lesser extent, and others, um, they tried to make their edition stand out by tweaking things a bit. And I think they went overboard on this. This record really shouldn't sound clinical. The music's already very precisely put together. Like some will say over tinkered with. So it has a production sheen already. To add any sheen on top of that is a grave error. And that's what the MCA audio file does. 
the top end is just ridiculous on it and it just ruins the record. Hearing it today on a modern system, I was like, no. By the end of the record, I went back to the other pressing, the RL pressing, and I was like, this is how it should sound. It is the standard. And this deviates from the standard too much in, a, in an attempt to try to sound different or more exciting or more sizzling or whatever. But it's an approach that I hate, as you know. And I don't like the MCA audiophile pressing. It has some other good qualities. It has excellent clarity, quiet vinyl, very good separation and punch, good bass response. But that, what's going up on up top is crazy. When they say Babylon sisters shake it, it's spitty. So not, not a good pressing. Um, you could do much better than paying anything for that besides maybe 10 bucks. The UME digital pressing. This is uh, from files done by Bernie Grunman. Um, it was put out for $30. Doesn't do anything gravely wrong, but it's unremarkable. It really isn't in the running at all. Um, an original pressing is miles better than this. Um, it's fine. It's nice to have a clean pressing. It's quiet, relatively. It sounds like we remember the record pretty much, but for for people that are looking for a sonic uh, upgrade, I, there isn't a sonic upgrade over the original pressing. The original RL is still the king. So let's get on to this. The UHQR, as we all know and love, comes in these beautiful boxes and I like them. Um, let's not drop the record. I don't have it in the sleeve. Um, finally, Gaucho has a jacket it could be proud of. This is beautiful. Beautiful, glossy gatefold. The original jackets were so ordinary looking and usually looked terrible by the time you got one. Um, this looks beautiful. The records. Now, I'm not sure if it's just because clouds and sky go nicely with clear vinyl, but these look spectacular. Really beautiful. Look at that. They are flat. Absolutely flat. They are centered. No wavering of notes. Nothing like that. They are clean out of the sleeve. I cleaned them enzymatically anyway, um, because I did sense a little bit of uh, noise floor on the vinyl. You know, Clarity Vinyl I don't think it's the quietest vinyl on the planet, but when the music kicks in, any any residual noise of the vinyl is pretty much obliterated and it sounds great. So you get 45 RPM, you get clarity vinyl, you get excellent pressing quality, you get a great jacket, you get the box, you get Robert Ludwig's EQ'd copy tape as the source, what does it sound like? Well, as I said, the RL is a hard bar to top. It really is. But I did notice on this one, the first thing that I noticed, besides how the music emerged from blackness in the most impressive way, is the Babylon Sisters Shake It part uh, was cleanly resolved on this pressing. And that was like such a joy to hear. Patty Austin's vocal, I don't know if it's, if it's multi-tracked or what, but there might be other vocalists there as well. But you can hear much more detail there. And it doesn't sound like a, a confused ball of sound. It's not spitty whatsoever. The whole top end of this is smooth as silk really, really beautiful. That was a great improvement over the original. Um, the openness of the soundstage, the holographic nature of it is uncanny on this. It retains all of the spatial characteristics of the original and improves them to the point where you can detect more depth, more height, more space and feeling like you've stepped into the recording a bit more. And again, it's uncanny what they were able to do. 
Tastefully applied EQ to a very, very good source has yielded dramatic results. The record still sounds like it should. It doesn't sound like it's been tweaked in any way that is not musical. It's all musical. It's very subtle, tasteful enhancements. And I think that's what's so special about this. Every instrument, every decay, every nuance of the production, the drum sound, the bass impact, the tonality of the guitars, the vocal, Donald Fagan's vocals sound better than they did on the original. And that's kind of a hard thing to top, but they do. Every aspect of this is a knockout of the park. It really is. Um, with the minor exception of the noise floor of the vinyl, which is not terrible, not obtrusive by any means. I want to stress that. Um, once the music kicks in, you won't even notice it. It's just something that I noticed because as I level match these, I tried to find the right point for each record. And I used the UHQR as a reference to where it locks in. There's a certain point on every record and the volume level can be quite high on the UHQR. And that's what I went with and matched everything to it. And when you get that volume level, it's actually quite loud. You can turn this up. Like it's addictive to turn it up because it doesn't fall apart. When I do that, of course, the record's playing at a much louder volume. You're going to hear a little bit of the lead in and lead out. Not a big deal. Overall, this is a smashing success. Really, I am so thrilled about this. I think they've knocked it out of the park. Chad and Bernie labored over this and made sure it was just right. And the results speak for themselves. Something that can actually hold a candle to the original RL pressing and better it. And I think they have done that. So that is my feeling on the new UHQR from Analog Productions, Steely Dan's Gaucho. Let me know what you think in the comments. Until next time, I'm Scott for The Pressing Matters. Have a great day.